Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. So we got a solo round ready for you, don't we Chris? Absolutely, I'm ready to rock and roll, roll baby. Chris ready is to rock and roll. Chris woke up in the zone this morning. He was just telling me he wants to just, he can't wait to get to this, uh, this podcast episode. It's going to light a fire. He's so passionate about it, which I know he is. So I have no doubt Chris is going to deliver on this one. Uh, I'm going to deliver on this one. This is going to be a really, really good episode. Um, a lot of practical application. And um, it's just going to be really good if, like, you know, someone's an aspiring online coach, a personal trainer, fitness enthusiast, or just a wellness coach in general, you know, that work with customers and clients. And shoot, I mean, I, I feel like that, you know, since we've been in the trenches for 10 years, you know, with Dynamic Duo training, coaching clients all around the world, thousand plus clients, and now we're coaching, you know, our inner circle clients, fitness coaches, uh, personal trainers, fitness enthusiasts, how to build a great online business, how to be a badass coach, and how to, you know, really treat their clients right. I mean, it's only fitting that we do an episode on this. Absolutely, and you're damn right. It's going to be a really good episode. It's going to be full of gold. And we're feeling good because we actually went back home to Santa Rosa for eight days and got our batteries recharged. But now we're feeling the heat when we come back in LA. As soon as you drive back in LA, I can't I can't describe it unless you guys understand. Like, but stress <laughs> stress levels go from been, 50 to 100. If you've been gone like from LA for at least seven days and you know you're driving back into LA like we did, you just feel it. It's just this energy, and I just I can't explain it. But blood, I'm ready blood, to roll. Blood temperature starts going up. Yeah, I'm ready to roll though. Let's do it. Hopefully everyone's doing well though. So uh, today we're going to be talking about how to give your coaching clients the best experience, retain them and get more referrals. So let's hop into it. So before we get into, you know, a lot of just kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're going to give, get into. And also too, we have something really cool for the listeners right. with this episode, right? We have a free gift for you guys. So you guys can head on right over to the show notes and go get that. But um, stick with us, you know, you know, throughout this um, episode because we are going to give a lot of good value. That's probably not in that, you know, that gift that we give. So um, yeah, but just keep in mind that we have a gift for you guys. So we're all so excited about giving that out and having you guys take action on that. But um, before I get into everything else, I want to talk about just the importance of having that mindset as a coach, right? That you have to understand that your co your clients, your customers, they are buying coaches they're not buying coaching right so they're buying you they want to build that relationship and establish that relationship with you so you, I, I mean I really feel that that's really important for a coach to understand because even for me when I first started I was a little bit kind of like you know lost with that just kind of on the fence about you know both ways but as you you know work with more clients as you get more experience as, as you see the impact you make on you know certain clients how you change their lives you understand that it's more of that relationship. So they're mm -hmm. buying coach, they're buying coaches, not coaching, right. right? So I just want to start off with that and just kind of distinguish that. So um, do you have any thoughts on that? No, it's a good point. I mean, we, we've seen it firsthand, right? For the past decade, you know, first being personal trainers, um, and then, you know, obviously, like you know, like in coaching, personal training, but we've been in this whole thing in pretty much ten years, coaching thousands of clients, right? So. What we do is not something where it's like this rocket science type of thing that like mm -hmm. other people can't do, right? There's other great personal trainers, other great online coaches out there, right? They can get people results, but it's like what you said, they're buying the coaches, that yeah. that relationship, that bond, that chemistry, that experience, that experience with, you know, the coach, you know, and, and that can't be replaced. Yeah. You know, it can't. There's other people out there that can do the coaching and stuff like that, the personal training, get you results, stuff like that, but you can't replace you as a coach in that experience and that bond you have with the client. Absolutely. You know? And then another thing too that I want to get into is teaching versus coaching. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a big one, you know, for, you know, the listeners to really just, you know, understand the hammer home because there is a difference between uh, teaching and coaching. For example, teaching in my opinion is almost like in this, this setting that we're here, right? There's a whiteboard, um, you know, there's other things that we can do to sit there and teach like a lesson. I can sit there and go on that board and break down, you know, macros, you know, exercise, you know, what to do, what not to do in the context of health and fitness. But can I really sit there and explain that in, you know, a layman term approach to my client? Right. Can I really coach them through those steps that I'm sitting there teaching on a board? Can I really make them take action, inspire them, have them be adherent? Can I really get them those results by just teaching? And you can't. You have to actually coach these people. And there's a huge psychology 
to coaching. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, that's where I, I just have to really just, you know, hammer that home because a lot of coaches these days don't understand that. They think that it's just all about just, I got to teach my, co my coaching clients something, give them information, give them some PDFs, give them a workout program, and that's it. I can just sit there and just ditch them. Yeah. But no, it's not like that. You have to sit there and actually coach these clients, hold their hands sometimes through the entire process, you know, inspire them, check in with them, always, you know, be there for them through the ups and downs and really coach them through the process and educate the hell out of them. Yeah, exactly. No, that's spot on. And then something else too, like before we get into uh, how you how you can give your coaching clients the best experience, retain them and get more referrals. Uh, you know, I want to just kind of talk about the distinguishment between uh, customer service and customer experience mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't understand that there's there's a difference between that. I didn't know that too, so I'm guilty of it. You know, I always thought customer service was just, that's it. You know, until like I started reading some more, um, you know, following some other people, and now I have a different perspective on it. But customer service, that is more kind of like if like your client or customer has an issue or something like that. Say for example, like a support issue, like you know, a technical <laughs> issue or mm -hmm. something like that with the program that they that you give them or something. Say you say you gave them like your training nutrition program and you know they have like a support issue. They can't download something, they can't open something, they don't understand something. Yeah, that's customer service to like sit there and be like on it right away and like solve that problem for them. To me that's customer service, but that's not customer experience. So customer experience is when you sit there and you take that client through an emotional journey, yeah. an emotional ride throughout the time that you guys are working together. So if you're working with a client for like eight, 12, you know, 16, 24 weeks, a full year, that's a whole entire journey right there that you need to take them through a client experience, an experience yeah. that they're gonna be like, holy shit, this was a hell of a ride when they look back at it, they're gonna get the results they want, they're gonna look back and be like, wow, like they're gonna rave about you, um, they're going to put you on social media. They're going to refer the hell out of you. Your lifetime value of the customer That's is going to be ex it's, it, it's just skyrocketing because they're always going to remember you. They're always going to remember that experience. They're always going to come back to you, not to some other coach. So if you're a coach, listen to this. There is a huge difference between customer service and customer experience. You want to do both, but you want to focus more on the customer experience because there's an emotional attachment to that. Whew. Yeah. And then what was what was that book that, that we we read? It was a really um, good book too because I want to give the listeners just how to never lose a customer. Yeah, how to by Joey lose. Coleman, I think. Yeah, yeah was really good. I just finished that this morning, and I mean, it's just it's great. Yeah. you know, so a lot of that stuff is really really just accurate. But I agree, and yeah. you know, all that will ultimately lead to just client retention and getting more referrals. Mm -hmm. Because again, what we teach in our you know uh, what's called online fitness uh, business personal mentorship program to our students is that. Don't sit there and always try to go seek new clients, right? Try to sit there and retain those clients and have them refer you because that's free marketing for yourself. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it could get really expensive to sit there and go and try to acquire a new client every single time through through ads, through social media content. I mean, it's exhausting. So yeah. it's like, why not treat these clients like you know the Ritz Carlton service and really just you know get the results, build that you know customer experience with them, and have them refer you out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we're gonna be talking. Before we get into this, uh, how about you hand me that diet coke? Because I'm <laughs> eyeing it and I'm thirsty, and I'm not promoting diet coke or anything like that. It's not a sponsor, but that's it does look mighty that, good. That's exactly why I had it there, and I was slowly taking out the cap because I don't want to make too much noise. And let's not show YouTube here that says diet coke because yeah. that's free advertising. We're not. We're coke. not doing invisible selling. Yet. <laughs> um, so yeah. So the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is um, the eight ways to communicate with your clients. So you want to go ahead and lead that off. Yeah, so and why, why are we talking about the eight ways to communicate with clients? Um, I mean, uh, honestly, man, you know, I'm going to be 100% transparent here, and a lot of people aren't going to like it, but hey, that's just kind of my personality and my nature. It's like we've been coaching clients for 10 years. We have the experience. We have the track record of working with thousands of clients around the world. We've had incredible mentors as far as business and the fitness side of things. That's what people don't understand, the fitness side of things. Lane Norton, Dr. Joe, Eric Helms. Yeah have our master's in sports nutrition, a bunch of other certifications. So we have the track record to talk about this stuff. And these are the eight things that we've noticed literally in the past that have really, really worked well for us and have sustained our online coaching business, sustained the six figure mark with it, right? And now we can sit here and deliver this type of information and value to our personal mentorship um, program students exactly. and the inner circle. And I wanna share this with some of these podcast listeners because it can be absolutely gold and it can really increase that lifetime value. It can really increase referrals, the clients raving about you and that customer experience, right? Yeah. So there's All eight points. ways to pretty much communicate with your clients if you're an online coach, okay? And that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through them as fast as we can. 
because I know we don't shut up. And then we're going to kind of give a couple of examples within them, okay. but it's very practical and just test them out. That's the biggest thing I can say. Yeah. And that's all I got to say is just take action and experiment with them. I mean, it's not set in stone. There's not one way to do anything, but we're giving you guys concepts that have worked for us. Like you said, we yeah. built and sustained six figure, you know, online fitness coaching businesses for many years. And now we're teaching it to our personal mentorship program. Exactly. So, you know, I really encourage you guys to try these out. All right, let's get into them. So That's the, the first very one. first one um, is in person. Okay. So I know you guys are thinking in person right away. That's that's weird. I mean, I'm an online coach, but it's not weird because if you live in a big city, right, let's say in LA, San Diego, Chicago, New York, whatever it is, uh, you chances are you'll probably have some clients that are kind of considered local almost, right? That's what we've done. So you could still be that type of coach and kind of, you know, not put your ego to the side and be like, you know what, even though I'm an online coach, I can still be a human and go communicate with my clients and <laughs> meet up with them, you know, for coffee or take them out to dinner or take them out to lunch or whatever it is, you know. Um, so think outside the box type of stuff like that. Just because you're an online coach, quote unquote, doesn't mean that you're a robot behind a, um, a computer screen, right? So you can meet up with your clients if they're local and get together and have a nice talk, you know, face to face. Um, it could be another route of you guys can get a training session together, a nice workout. You could take them on even like a grocery type of like educational type of like, um, you know, run or something like that. Educate them on like grocery shopping. Um, there's so many things you can do with that, man. Um, you can even run out of room these days, like on liquid space and one or two hours to like educate them if they want to learn something on the whiteboard or learn something in person, accelerate the process that way. Yeah, and you can even rent out like a mom and pop's gym for like an hour or two and do like yeah. a, a seminar there, a clinic, just something just to where it's like, it's going to build that community, right? And I remember we did this, you know, a couple times at Gold's Gym, the Mecca, where we did like, you know, free meetups with all of our clients that were from around the radius where we say, hey, let's meet up on a Saturday at Gold's Gym, get a nice workout together at noon, outside, have some fun. And after that, we would take them to go eat at Firehouse, which mm -hmm. was down the street. And right. it was such a cool experience, just taking pictures, getting to know people, the face-to-face -face interaction. And to me, that's always gonna build that lifetime you know, customer going forward, Absolutely. it really is. Yeah, 100%. So number two on um, how to communicate with clients is obviously email. Um, and we are in that era of email, you know, and more now it's more towards like social media, DMs and stuff like that. But via email, I mean, you still have to communicate via email, you know, because for us, what I've done in the past is that's how I do my client check-ins, you know, with people on a week to week basis is via email. So every Sunday night, what I do is I send them out a reminder, you know, to, Hey, you know, please update me with, you know, the certain update sheets that I need for you guys, um, whether you're going to do video or not. Then I tell them a little bit about myself, how my weekend was. Please tell me what your weekend's about. I want to know more about your weekend. So when we get on the video thing, video um, you know chat, um, we can discuss that. And then from there, you know, I just give them an action step or some form of motivation to go into the week, right? To just give them that that motivation and inspiration that hey, it's a new week, new goals. Get after it. You know, maybe if you had a bad week, get back on track. No big deal. So that's one way I, I do it with email is just you know sending my clients, you know little inspirational messages along their journey and just little touch points. No, I like that. Uh, I, I do the same thing on a Sunday as well too like that. And then whenever I do my updates, like, you know, on Tuesdays with my very few like handful of clients that I have, but even in the past, you know, I would send them in their updates, you know, when they were, whenever they replied and share something with them, something motivational or a question to ponder or a quote or something like that, just to kind of motivate them, you know, and just get them thinking outside of just like fitness or if they're having a, a bad day or something like that, something just picks them up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. You can still utilize email a lot. It's a great way to just to kind of, you know, make folders. If you have like Gmail or something like that, make mm -hmm. subfolders for your guys' clients, put their name on there and, you know, always move the conversations in there because it's data that you can kind of compile if you guys have conversations and, you know, keep track of them. If like something ever was to happen, you have that track record and like that data right there that, oh, like this is the conversation you had with the pricing or the agreement or on your program. Yeah. So you can always go back to that. So yeah, email is still great, even though you're doing online coaching. The third one is uh, mail. Number four. Number four. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we are on three. <laughs> the heck with this guy. He's throwing me off. I jumped one ahead. All right. So number three, uh, <laughs> mail. So good old snail mail. Yeah. Kind of old school, like look in your uh, P.O. box or your, um, your like to kill a mockingbird style mailbox, <laughs> whatever it is, right? <laughs> but uh, you can always still communicate with your clients that way. And you, it's always so meaningful when, just think about this, right? 
how excited do you get when like you see an Amazon box or something like that? Yeah. Can't right? wait to open it. Can't like. wait to see if like that's the book that I got, right? Something physical, mm-hmm. right? So put put yourself in that situation as like if you were a client as well too, and, and you received a letter or you received something like that. So you as the coach, you can always like mail out a letter um, to your clients, um, just thanking them, or you know you guys can send a postcard. That's what we've done before when we like travel and mm-hmm. stuff like that. One time we were in Puerto Rico, we um, you know sent some of our clients just like a, a postcard. It's, it's not even that expensive, you know, but to, for them to receive that postcard and just kind of understand that they're you're, you're giving them a piece of the experience with you, you know, right. while you're out there traveling, mm-hmm. something like that. What you can even do is get creative to even mail off like customized and branded flash drives with video messages on there or, you know, downloadable PDFs on there, but it's something meaningful because it's something physical and then you're mailing it. Right. right. So it's a different experience. There's a different emotional attachment on that, you know? Yeah. So that's my kind of advice with like mail. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's good old, it's never, I don't think mail is ever going to die out. Um, but like you said, I just think it's more about the physical touch and just yeah. you know, really having something to actually re- to memorize and make you stand out from other right. people. Right. Um, number four in communicating is your phone. Mm. Ooh, where would we be at? Where would we be without phones these days? I'm holding <laughs> my phone right here. So, yeah, I'm still trying to work on that too, and not be so glued to the damn phone. Yeah, I hate it. But anyways, phone is huge, and this one there's absolutely zero excuse because there's just so much you can do on a phone, right? Video, audio, text messaging, social media apps. I mean, it just there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. There really isn't. So. If you're not communicating with your if you're not communicating with your client via phone and giving yourself access to them like through text message or anything else, then WhatsApp I just I, or yeah or WhatsApp or uh, audio. I think you're just doing yourself a disservice. I really think you are because we're just in that day and age, you know, to where everyone's adapted to phones pretty much, and they want more access to you. They want to be able to ask you a quick question if they're at the grocery store and. Maybe they're confused about a product or an ingredient. You know, they have a quick question that needs a quick response. Maybe they're having anxiety at a social event. That's where you need to come in and be able to be like, okay, I got you. I got you. I'm your coach. I'm going to be right here every step of the way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I agree. Um, communication through your phone, it's probably one of the number one things. It really is. It's just because of today's age, everybody has a damn phone and literally we're glued to it. It's sad in a way, but it's just the reality. Yeah. No, 100%. I remember like one time too, um, you know, we, I don't know if it was one of the uh, coach that we had before or it was a, a peer or something like that or a colleague and, or it was maybe, it might've been somebody that was teaching other like, you know, personal trainers or coaches about going on online and stuff. But I remember they said that, oh, don't ever, you know, exchange your phone number and nothing but email and yeah. this and that. And I just like shook my head and I was like, wow, you know, that's very close minded. Number two, it's very selfish of you as a coach, you know, to sit there and be like, you're only going through email, right? And it's like, that's a real nice way for somebody to go out, go out and look for another coach. And mm-hmm. it's a real nice way for me to become that coach where you charge like 50 bucks for a client because nobody is going to pay a premium for only freaking you know, fucking email. So, right. you know, but that's just the truth. And that shit just pisses me off when people, you know, just are so close minded like that. But yeah, that's number four. Um, number five is video and that kind of ties in like we can tie this in with like a phone we can tie this in with um, a laptop whatever it is right but there's so many video platforms these days right you have the little video thing on your your laptop that you can always use I like sending videos like that uploading them through Google Drive I like making videos like on my phone and through my laptop and uploading to YouTube unlisted sending clients the links like that um, you have Zoom these days, right? Mm-hmm. Video chatting. Uh, you have Skype still. Uh, you have FaceTime on your phone. You yeah. have WhatsApp. That has a pretty cool video thing that I always send my clients videos and stuff like that. Um, it, there's just no excuse yeah, like to not sit there and utilize video anymore. Yeah. You know, as an online coach, there is just really. Not. It just seems like, like if you're not using it, you're almost hiding. Yeah, you're hiding. You know, something. And you're just not wanting to get better, adapt to, you know what's really going on, what's gonna catch people's attention, and it goes back to the know, like, trust factor, right? I think that your clients are gonna to get to know you, like you, and trust you, and break down those barriers, you know, within the coaching, you know, context of a relationship, mm-hmm. it's so much faster if you're able to sit there and show your face, show your emotions, not always, you know, be so chipper and, and happy, but just be real, you know what I mean? Just show your real self. They know right. you're human, and you're not gonna be perfect every day, too. Okay. So another quick little um, tip that I wanna give people is that what I do 
with my fitness coaching clients, um, I, I want to say probably two times a month. What I do is I just I do a quick video, so I just pre-record the video on my phone on like a camera roll, and I do like a little like you know Friday wisdom or a message, just something that resonated with me that was just maybe in the context of fitness, lifestyle, mindset, habits, mm -hmm. and I just give them a two minute like lesson or just my perspective on it just leading them into the weekend with something positive. Mm -hmm. And then I just upload to YouTube real quick, all on my phone, send them that unlisted link through text message and boom. Yeah. And they really appreciate it. Yeah. And that maybe takes me about <laughs> 15 minutes, Yeah. 15 minutes total. But again, the ROI on that is just, it's irreplaceable. Yeah. And if you guys don't want to sit there and be that coach where it's like you want to, you don't want to send individual videos. Maybe you, maybe you have like a group style coaching, maybe you have a model to where it's like, you could send them a group video every single week yeah. or even do like live Zoom, like group teachings, kind of like what we do with our personal mentorship program. Yeah, we do exactly. live two live Zoom teachings for an hour. We bring an expert in, take Q&A, yeah. stuff like that. But it's very interactive. It's, it's live. It's a video. You know exactly. what I mean? So um, yeah, video is huge. So definitely utilize all the stuff with that. All right. So we're moving along. So number six in communicating with your clients is audio. So again, audio is huge. There's plenty of audio platforms on your phone, on the computer, a desktop that you can sit there and communicate with. So, I mean, don't sell yourself short on audio. Like you said, WhatsApp has audio, mm -hmm. Facebook Messenger has audio, Instagram now has audio yep. through the DM. LinkedIn so, has audio. LinkedIn to where it's like, there's no excuse. Yeah. So, um, what I do personally with my clients is if I'm traveling and I just know the Wi Fi is not good or something, I'll send them an audio message. You know, or an audio update getting back to them. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll indicate, hey, I'm traveling. The reason I'm sending you an audio, not a video this time, is just because of that reason. And they totally are okay with that. And I've had clients too where they're, they're camera shy, you know, and maybe they want to go the audio route first to build up that confidence and mm -hmm. that, that, that just, that, that, yeah, like I said, the confidence to where then they start doing video at some point, you know, cut back to me th through their check ins. And I think that's awesome. So audio, I mean, I would never say that, you know, don't do audio because to me, I'd rather do video audio than a text and then an email. Hmm. That's, that's the order that I, yeah. that I would go in. Yeah, absolutely. And then one more thing with audio too, which is cool is you have SoundCloud now. So you could record mm -hmm. an audio like update or, or whatever it is, a message. Um, I like actually answering questions from clients through audio. Um, that way I can scroll down, um, you know, with stuff and you can upload it to, um, SoundCloud and just it's a private link so you just send the client the private link to SoundCloud and then boom audio comes up and yeah. it's like a private like personal like audio message from you on that so that's a cool way to do it yeah. one thing that came to mind from video also these days is um, screen screen share type of uh, apps yeah. so like Camtasia and Loom. Loom right those are really cool Based, because uh, uh, QuickTime QuickTime because you can sit there and kind of like do an overview you know on your computer and sit there and walk clients through video stuff talking still and that's very, very personal as well too. Like if so, for example, if you're sending out their training nutrition program, do a screen share of like, you know, an overview of, you know, walking them through the PDFs or the Excel sheet or trainer eyes, whatever it is, and it makes things so much more, it's such, a, such an experience, like breaking down that entire program with them and it avoids a lot of questions as well too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's stuff like that. I agree. All right, so number seven, uh, set or <laughs> social groups, okay? So with social groups, I mean, you have different platforms as far as like you can create a Facebook group to have all of your clients sit there and interact. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that. We've done a lot of great stuff with that. Um, these days, I think DMs, DM groups and Instagram are pretty engaging, right? It's maybe yeah, the next thing absolutely. with that. Mm -hmm. um, WhatsApp groups, I like doing WhatsApp groups with my team. Um, so I'll put them all in a, in a WhatsApp group and this way, you know, if I have some like motivational thing or a quote or a little tip or something like that, like in the kitchen or something like that, I can easily pop a video up there or like a little audio message. Boom. It, 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 it's a nice little like personal message that goes to all of them, you know, so I like doing that. You have other platforms like Slack. It's a pretty cool like social group. Mm -hmm. um, and then also too, like this, the social group goes for like in person as well too. Yeah, kind of what we talked about. Kind right of now. what we talked about. Number one, you know, if you have do, do do client meetups and mashups to where you run out of gym, or if you go to a local gym and then take everybody out to like lunch or something like that, and just get together, you know, make it a very social type of like you know environment, you know. So yeah, I would just say just build your tribe with it. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I mean, social groups. I mean, 
everybody wants to be a part of something. Yeah. You know, it's like, I get it. The whole online thing is great. I mean, there's so much that can be done with it. You can reach so many people. But if you have that opportunity to get in, in, in front of people, show your face, show who you are. Uh, I just think it just it makes that client experience so much more enjoyable to where they're going to rave about you and just go give referrals out. Yeah. Yeah. So the last one, whoo, we made it to the eight ways to communicate with your clients is presents, gifts. Gifts. And this one is a big one. It really is. And there's a book on this too. It's called Giftology. Giftology. I don't know what the author is. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's a really good book and we'll plug it in the show notes. But it's just there's there's so much truth to that about you know just the physical product just the the emotion of receiving a gift from you know someone and even when it's unexpected more importantly that just makes it so much better the experience in my opinion when you're not expecting it you know especially coming from your coach someone that you look up to that you're you're excited to work with that you've spent your hard-earned money to invest in your health your your body your education and then your coach goes and gives you a gift, like in the mail, I mean, it's freaking awesome. It really is. And this is something that we teach in our personal mentorship program. We have a really good section on this because I really think it's important because we have done this. When we've had clients sign up in the past, we have you know sent them t-shirts, we've sent them physical books, flash drives. Um, there's clients where we send them the handwritten birthday cards, yep. uh, other cards. I have other clients where I know it's their birthday and I'll get them like a mug, just something that they're interested in, even if it's like a stuffed animal, but it doesn't matter about the damn price. Yeah. It's about the concept of you thinking about them and giving them that personal gift from you. Exactly. Like for example, um, a week ago when we were at in Santa Rosa, yeah. right? Remember I brought a book with me and I got a, a birthday card for my client over yeah, in Russia, that, yeah. right? And yeah, the first thought is like, dang, she's over in Russia and like, you know, all oh, the shipping prices and this and that. but. I, I don't give a shit like how much it costs, you know, because I know how meaningful that's going to be in that experience and that emotional journey she's going to go through when she receives that package. And she has that book right there in front of her and it's handwritten to her and then she opens it up and she has a birthday card with a nice little message for her birthday. You know what I mean? So it's little things like that that go a long way. And kind of to um, piggyback on that, a good little kind of rule of thumb is use maybe two and a half to five percent of the client's you know um program like so, so i would even say ten percent even ten percent it could be two yeah. and a half to ten percent of yeah. like the earnings of, of it right so for example if you have a client that pays you fifteen hundred dollars you know for a program geez you're telling me you can't budget out anywhere from two and a half percent to ten percent of that fifteen hundred dollars for a gift exactly i mean come on you know, that's, <laughs> that's just increase. really that's really greedy it's gonna again it's gonna go back to <laughs> giving them that experience that emotional you know journey it's going to have them you're going to retain them more they're going to probably put that on social media mm -hmm. and people are going to be like holy shit like your, your coach did that who's your coach then you know they're probably going to tag you and then you're going to get hit up through like you know instagram or whatever um but it's just that 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 extra mile you know for that person Absolutely. to experience that you know through a physical gift so yeah it doesn't have to be expensive you know it really doesn't it just has to be something meaningful and don't be like that coach where it's like you know like you're sending them a bunch of type of like you know branded stuff of like yourself exactly. you know what i mean like it, it's fine if like some of it is a little bit branded and has like you know like your logo on there but don't be that coach where you get them like a coffee mug that has your logo yeah. pen <laughs> uh, and then you know maybe like I don't know, a laptop thing or whatever it is, right? Just yeah. don't, because it's so obvious what you're trying to do with that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just trying to so, have a market for you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I agree. But um, yeah, so that, that was the eight ways to communicate with clients. So I just want to recap them really quick. So number one is in person. Number two is email. Number three is snail mail. Number four is the phone. Five, video. Six, audio. Seven, social groups. And eight, presence. So, mm -hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it for today's episode. Uh, nice and short and sweet uh, for you guys. Um, but we just really want to get hammer this home just on the importance of giving your clients, your online coaching clients, an experience, retaining them, and getting referrals. Um, and to me, I just, I'm so passionate about this and I, I love teaching this to our inner circle students in our personal, you know, in our online personal mentorship program because they are crushing it. They are taking action and all these things that we have taught that has worked for us and I see it. I see them doing it and it's freaking amazing. So um, take these eight ways today and really take action on them and test them out. And I promise you, you're gonna get more clients, you're gonna retain them and you're just gonna be a badass coach. You're just right. gonna se separate yourself from the herd 
and not be a shitty coach like most of those people are out there. And you know, I, I, I'm sorry, but those those people aren't going to last. Exactly. They're really not. Yeah. So and it just builds your brand, builds your tribe. It just builds absolutely um, reputation. Reputation. The, 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 again, it increases lifetime value of the customer. It really, really does. You know, um, and I would say also, like Eric said, take these eight you know ways to communicate with your clients into practice. Really try them out. They're very practical, and then take advantage of the giveaway that we're we're giving. You know, since you guys took the time to listen to this, and we want to help you out a little bit more if you're an online coach, and you know, take advantage of that 12 steps to an excellent customer journey for online fitness coaches. Um, download that we're going to do. So yeah. where, where can they find that? At? They can find that in the show notes. Okay, that's cool. going to be in the show notes. Yeah. So head on over to the show notes at liveadynamiclifestyle.com. We'll have that linked up. This will be episode. 153. 153. 153. Yeah. So, yeah. So you'll find it. Yeah, take advantage of that 12 step, you know, to excellent customer service journey for online fitness coaches um, gift. And um, yeah, just put it into action. And I really hope that you guys put these other things that we talked about in action today, too. Absolutely. If you guys can't find it for some reason, just email us support at dynamicinnercircle.com. Support at dynamicinnercircle.com. And we'll, we'll give it to you. We're cool. A- absolutely. Okay, guys. So, as always, um, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this uh, episode uh, valuable, please share it with somebody. Um, That means the world to us. Leave a rating and review and um, tag us on Instagram, um, Facebook. Shoot us a DM. We want to engage with you. So, you know, tell us what you guys liked about it. And then go out there and and live a, a badass lifestyle, a dynamic lifestyle, and be a dynamic coach to people. Later, guys. Until next time.